There are lots of us out there that do everything they can to process jobs efficiently and build up their social profiles with content in the hopes of getting seen and ranked on Google. It seems like making a name for yourself never ends, but where does all this sweat equity get you? Today, Matthew Jones from Powderworks Dallas-Fort Worth is back, and we're giving you the deets on free and easy ways to effectively manage your projects, know whether your search engine results are paying off, and if your efforts are getting you ranked at all. Are you hitting those industry benchmarks? And if so, what are they? Buckle up, you're going to learn a thing or two. This is a long one, but stick around to the end as Matthew and I tie it all together. Get ready to level up your powder coater game. Oh my gosh. My morning sounds like your morning. <laughs> your morning sounds like my, you know, afternoon. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, it's it's afternoon there. <laughs> we just I had a client pull up um that we had shipped a truckload of stuff. Hey, well, we subcontract, we courier service um picked up this morning. And it was three pallets of merchant of product and they only got one. <laughs> and it's been this, you know, kind of shit storm all, all morning about, you know, we need our product. We need our product. And I didn't know what the problem was. And I was like, we sent the product. We've got a little bit left to do, but uh, you know, we sent you a lot of stuff this morning and they show up and <laughs> very quickly, my, uh, my lead said, well, we sent three pallets. Well, we only got one. Well, here's the BOL. Here's the shipping document from the shipper saying three pallets. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, we, um, we parted ways with an operations manager um, a couple weeks ago. And by extension, we um, ended up um, losing our office manager who was his wife oh oh that's always um and and it hasn't been been pretty um they uh they left a or they put a not complimentary review on our facebook and stuff like yeah. that um ironically referencing operations and the the lack thereof and when, <laughs> when he was when he was the operations manager so that's been interesting and we've had a slew of uh of equipment failures uh over the last i'm i'm currently running on uh on a rental diesel compressor um and a rental forklift <laughs> and the oven's being finicky yeah, um, and it's just you know there's all the stuff that we all have to deal with from a bit from a business standpoint, but it seems to be hitting all at one time. So I've had many, I've I've had several of my employees walking around saying that they feel like we've been sabotaged, which it can feel that way, can't man, it? Man, I mean it's it's like, what did I do, you know? And <laughs> um, just. It's it's been so hard over the last couple of weeks to um, to gain momentum, keep momentum. Yeah, and that uh, I think is the most frustrating thing is when you feel like you just aren't getting anywhere. That but I do. I hear you on the husband and wife. You know, when you hire, it's. I mean, it hasn't happened here. It's just me and Ross mostly for the most part, and then you know another employee whether they be part-time or full-time but um you know I know Ross's dad his company had that and it was extreme when they left because I think they were skimming you know not to say that that's your situation but like these people had a racket going on 
too, on top of all that. Um, so it didn't end well. And they put so you put so much trust in a husband and wife team um, because you're so desperate for good help, you know, but it can easily go really bad, really fast. Well, and it's, it's very hard. Uh, it's very hard to keep one without the other. Um, it's very yeah. hard. I mean, ne- nepotism in general is always something that, uh, um, that I'm weary of. Although, as I say that I, it's rampant in my company. I mean, I've got brothers and brothers and all that kind of stuff, but, um, but yeah, you know, in a situation where um, you've got two people who, for all intents and purposes, run your, you know, run your company, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're not going to do that forever unless, unless you, you know, make them a partner or something like that. I mean, I don't know what you could do to bond, you know, an employee, right. um, but it's just, it's, it, it, it's just one of those things and it's, we all, we all have to deal with it, but, um, it sure, it sure did send, uh, you know, some shockwaves and good and bad, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a, a lot of things that we have keyed in on that, um, that need to be done that weren't getting done. Um, and you know, there's, there's obviously there's stuff that like she was doing for me that, I don't have just a quick replacement for, um, right. you know, so, you know, naturally it, it's, I mean, she, she was doing a lot and, you know, having her not be here is, uh, is, is certainly not, uh, well, you're having not, to pick up the pieces, you know, yeah, and I then really try am. to find the little bread breadcrumb trail. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that it's kind of funny that I think we're segueing into why we wanted to talk today, which was, you know, how we're using a an application called Trello uh, to maybe facilitate some of that. Um, and I don't know if some of the work that she was doing um, is was in Trello. Um, it absolutely was. Um, yeah. You know, one of one of her one of one of the things that she that she was handling from, you know, as soon as a piece of paper was generated, um, you know, she was putting that into Trello. Um, so that's yeah. something that, that, you know, as, as part of a, co- a company meeting that I had on, um, on Monday, letting everyone know that for the foreseeable future, um, we're all going to have to make sure that we're picking up the slack with regard to Trello um, to make sure that, everything's moving uh, onto it and and across the board um, to the end like it should. But Trello in itself is really, is what's called a Kanban board, K-A-N-B-A-N, where you can actually move um, columns and cards uh, to each column pretty easily just with a click of a mouse. Um, But it also can, I think the advantages to Trello is that it has an incredible uh, ability to connect with all kinds of other applications to get workflow and um, project management under control. Um, You can also pair it with an app called Zapier, which I use on some things. and that Zapier is just a if this then that kind of uh, workflow where uh, it just sends it automatically. It's like a bot that if you have it all connected right, um, things just kind of get moved automatically. Um, and I, maybe I don't know if you're using Zapier along with the Trello, but I'd imagine as things can progress, you know, people can get notified. Uh, if something's completed, then a message gets sent to that person who's also on the Trello board to say, okay, this is the next step. We need to package it up and put it on a pallet or whatever, call the, call the shipping company to come pick it, pick up their three pallets, not one pallet, (laughs) but you've kind of taken it a step further and kind of created your own system with it. Right. So I, I've been using Trello now for, I guess, boy, going on four years. Um, and and my um, 
my utilization of Trello, um, and I'll back up. I I was shown it by a um, uh, friend of mine who was using it for his uh, vehicle accessory shop. Um, as a way to schedule jobs and mm-hmm. and and have specific mechanics working on specific things, um, the way that he was utilizing it is completely different than the way that I'm that I utilize it. Um, the you know the add-ons that you're, you were talking about they call power-ups, and yeah. the 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 main power-up that I that I use is the calendar function. I love the calendar function because. Um, it allows me to obviously schedule things, schedule schedule jobs the way that I'd like it to, um, you know, run through the shop. But the actual board setup that I have um, is set up in a way where uh, we've got it basically of how it runs through the shop. Hey, Powder Coating Nation, Kim Scott here. It's time to grow your business with us. The Powder Coating Near Me directory can get your powder coating shop the real exposure it needs to succeed when you list your job shop today. Join a list of top custom coders who've listed their credentials to be discovered by the customers who are searching for powder coating every day. Head over to powdercoatingnearme.com, click add a coating shop and start creating your very own page for free. Yes, free. You can add your logo, name, address, phone number, map listing, social media links, photos, video, and more. When you submit your listing, we'll get notified and approve you right away. Now you can add all the categories you specialize in, and even add your own tags. Get the SEO and valuable backlinks your company needs for authority and getting ranked. You can even use the link you create and share it to your favorite social media profiles to build legitimacy as a custom coder. What are you waiting for? Become part of the largest consumer search directory in powder coding in the world. All for free. Find and click the link in this podcast or go to powdercoatingnearme.com to get started growing your brand today. Oh, so So yeah, you've got the picture of the piece coming in or what it is everything you know we put a picture with it you open it up it's a detailed description of what it is um you know where it is it's in sandblast um you know we've got uh uh this is actually the columns you have just if you can zoom in a little closer to like when you have receiving or whatever Shop one, which okay. is receiving, which is which is where um, which is our receiving area. Receiving, mm-hmm. it's been received. Sandblast, okay. To shop two, so that means it's ready to go across across to um, the main shop. Mm-hmm. Shop two production. You know this is you know that's stuff that is is in production. Quality control, quality fail. So if something has failed, quality, and then. Uh, I'm sorry. And then shipping. Mm-hmm. Um, and then pick up or to archive. So, you know, that's that means it's been picked up. It's out of the building. Um, that's I like and, that. It's simple enough. You know what I mean? And one of the um, one of the things that I've always really appreciated about the uh, the program is that it's seamless across platforms platform so as soon as something moves it if you if you have it open on your phone and you move it on the computer it instantly it's instantly moved yeah. on the phone there's no there's no downtime um so there's no there's no lag time or reason for anybody to be like well it wasn't where it was supposed to be on the board and you know it, it moves immediately um but so, you know, so what I'm so let me back up just a second here and and say, OK, so the person on the floor that's in charge of sand blasting, when he's done, he goes to his phone and he moves that project into the next column. Or is it just somebody else in charge of that? So that's the way it's supposed to work. Yes, um, we actually. So it, this is backed up, um, whether this is the backup or um, pay, the paper trail is our backup, however you want to look at it. 
Um, we have traveler documentation that 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 follows the part um, throughout the shop as well. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, that's the that's what everybody's supposed to be looking at. Um, I have key people in the in the shop that that do have access that um, you know not everybody has access, but most people have access to Trello, um, and they're supposed to be making sure that things are moving mm-hmm. throughout the uh, on the board the way it's supposed to be, um, and you know it works. Yeah, the, it's beautiful. It's beautifully dynamic, and that's the that's the awesomeness of Trello, um, and you can fully customize it. I mean, I I mean there are people. Uh, that have these boards mastered. You can really get <laughs> deep with Trello, but um, oh, I've I've gone so far over the years. I've there there have been long period of times where I had it um, set up by day, and mm-hmm. and I would actually have blocks on that day for specific jobs to include specific people having specific colors. So if I wanted say. Uh, John Smith to be working on this one project. I make a make a block for him and put on there just a note. You know, work on this project from twelve to twelve to two. Yeah, um, we're we're spraying this from this time to this time. You know, but as you get larger and larger, that becomes harder and harder to do in a way that yeah. re- that's easy to read. Right. Uh, on, on that board. It just never ends. That column never ends. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the one thing I don't like about, you know, like it can really get a really long column going on there. You know, um, I, I use, uh, I think there's another program. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Slack. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, it is one of the power ups you can get where people, if you can tie in this, you could really get it automated if you could tie in the Zapier part of it with the Slack. I think pretty much everybody would be using the Slack at that point and the jobs would, would be zapped into the next column. Um, there's a way to do that. I don't, it, it'd be kind of fun to see if we could work together to make that kind of a, a functioning template. Um, and that's what I was thinking, you know, just to kind of get have you create a template out of your, you know, uh, of what you've created here and, um, uh, and then be able to share it for free because if anybody, you know, because you can, I think you can have a, a free account at Trello. It's just when you start to do the power-ups and you get a lot of power-ups going, um, that's right. where they, they charge you money. But I still think it's a, an, a very affordable program for basic, baseline companies to start using because um you know i'm still on free are you yeah i mean mean, you can do all that for free very functional very very functional free um and and you know again one of the one of the things that i've really it's you were mentioning atlassian um you know you can put this on roku you can have a a roku tv Mm. in the shop with Oh, no with, way. With your Trello on it, there's an Atlassian app on Roku that you can use the remote. And so your guys can actually just um, ro- you just use the remote to scroll through jobs. They don't have to use it to enter in any, inf- any information. Yeah. But, you know, you can have that up in the shop almost like your, you know, the screens they have in the fast food um, yep. uh, kitchens that tell what the next job is, what the next uh, food item is. I mean, there's there's so many things that you can do with a good scheduling program. It's true. I know we've had, um, you know, uh, Justin Money came on, oh gosh, it's been over a year now, two years almost. And, um, you know, he uses to do, which is a project management software that is supposedly able to adapt to multiple different kinds of companies. Right from manufacturing to uh, God knows what. Um, I've tried to get Martin on the show just because everybody that buys into his program, you know, really loves it. Although they say that the hurdle getting started is tremendous. Um, So there's a bit of a drawback at the beginning, but then once they're all established, uh, you know, 
they're, they're, they're happy. And I know that, um, uh, Reno King has from, uh, King's powder, uh, armor powder coating has gotten it. I know that our friend Denny Young from DJ powder coating, actually, when he got to do, I, on my recommendation, I sent him to the, watch the videos and then he called Martin and got set up and they, they have a pretty, you know, they're making over a million dollars a year at their, in, at their powder coating shop in North Carolina. Um, he got to do and basically eliminated his job, <laughs> you know, and it's now freed him up to do other things that he's been right. wanting to do in his company. So I think the power of project management software is if you have it set up, I mean, the problem is, is Trello, you got to get really deep with what you can do with it and maximize that. And it takes time versus onboarding with a company like to do to, to, you know, that has that program already available to you, but also, you know, uh, there's a, a, you know, you got to do a lot of input or data input, um, from the get, which both is going to take a long time, you know, but I think it, it'd be cool if we could create a template, uh, sure. just a basic yeah. template, um, and then give me maybe people instructions on how to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go, um, you know, we're pretty simple around here. We use that form. We just have a form. It's on the free downloads or it's on the, if you sign up for the podcast, you can get it for free. Um, it has a subscriber or a sponsor or whatever of the show. But um, I, I would like to be paperless more um, and stuff. And it would be cool to see a screen up in there just to see, you know, because right now we have just a whiteboard you know, um, but I, I'm always into tech and stuff and making things less paper. And well, you know, on, on that note as well, um, one of the things that we have done a lot over the past, the past and we still do to an uh, extent is, um, you know, like QuickBooks online, um, you can do snapshots and you can, po you can put an invoice yeah. into um, as a tab on the, uh, on, on the, the job itself. Um, so that, Again, the um, client information is readily accessible for whoever needs to make a phone call or maybe call and ask a question to the client or things like that. Um, or the client calls and they ask a question about the bill. Anybody can can really pick it up and answer. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's I think there's. You're out, you're talking about a template, you know, I think there's probably two or three templates that, um, that work for the different size, you know, shops, mm -hmm. the key ingredient and something that I mentioned to my crew once again on Monday during the meeting was, um, these, these, the software is only as good as the information that is put into it. Right. Um, you know, and you can have a great program like Trello or job pro or whatever, um, you know, you're going to use um if we don't put the right if we don't put the information in it it's 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 useless it's essentially a takeaway so i mean you could pay five thousand ten i don't know how much to do costs but i mean or any other software i've never really looked at buying into any kind of software uh, other than the trello um i mean you could spend I mean, these com some of these companies, they spend thousands of dollars on, on that right. kind of stuff, you know, but yeah, you're right. If, if you don't put the information in right or at all, what good is it? Right. So, um, it is always based on the processes that go be behind that software. So just, um, speaking of the processes that go into it. So when you say you're talking about paper, um, you know, this is, this is, this is every job that we have in the shop has this much paper, you know, I mean, yeah. got eight sheets of paper that go along with it um, that are all signed and initialed um, from departments, you know, that they did their job. Um, and, you know, it's all accountability, obviously. Um yeah. And and to some extent, paperwork is always going to be there because if you're IS 9, ISO nine thousand or ASA and everything like that, you've got to have you got to have that paper documentation 
you know, on point and stuff like that. But I'm with you on trying to be as digital as possible. Yeah. Pushing the envelope, at least to get it to like a billing point of view. So like when the guy (laughs) goes to bill it, they know exactly how to bill it or, you know, it's, there's just not, it's, it's, it does so much for the shop that you just really can't do with paper. Well, namely, everybody can look at it at any right. given time, you know, uh, as long as they have access to it. Uh, and that's where the Slack thing was coming in for me, because um, Slack is sort of that communicator that goes between um, it, where you tie into uh, Trello. So right. if someone was, if, if, if say you're the person that's in charge of moving the card of the project from sandblast to shop production then what what it does is you can connect through zapier you can connect slack and you can you can make a zap so when you move that card a zap will happen and it'll give everybody a notice in slack or as particular person in slack a notice that okay this is now done with sandblasting it's now in your area to work on next or, you know, whatever. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of trying all these three apps together, but, you know, getting back to the Zapier thing, you can actually create. So when something, a card gets moved into production, it'll alert that person um, through Slack to say, okay, this is up next. This is up next. So now you're not talking to anybody. It's just bots talking to people. Wow. It's just informing them that you're this is next and and then they click on that card and it tells you everything. I mean, assuming you're putting in, you know, if it's rims, you got to tape off or they want two tone or whatever it is that they've it, that the customers requested, um, it'll be on that card, I'm assuming, right? You know, when you get that, you know, all that information. So you're literally just putting it, you're literally um creating a card with all that data where Zapier can pull that data and then um, transfer it to CRM and put it through production by alerting everybody what's next. That's what you could do. Um, I'm looking at it and wow, it's amazing. It it is. Um, Slack gets a little, uh, Slack gets a little annoying sometimes um, because uh, it, it's, you know, if you're, especially if you're doing a lot of, um, communicating, uh, back and forth on, you know, uh, on a lot of stuff, um, you know, maybe if you're like, maybe if, you know, you've got two or three shops and you're trying to communicate, that could get a little crazy, but, um, I'd say if you did it right and that's the trick, right. You got to do it right. Um, you could, pretty much have it all seamless and pretty much have all those questions answered. And then they're only getting, you know, if they really have a serious problem with, then they're coming to you with that real serious problem, which they could still communicate with you on Slack for, instead of having to knock on your door, barge in, call you on the phone, text you, you know, I mean, that's kind of really where you could get real technical with it and, and just dial it in. Right. Well, the, the, the irony for me is that I spent so much time telling my guys to keep their phone put away, uh, <laughs> you know, and, um, but and, your and, idea with the screen is a great idea too, you know? Yeah. We've, um, we've enjoyed doing that. Um, you know, the only, the only issue with it is just, uh, the elements. Um, it's, you know, hard to keep a, a, a television working for very long and a, uh, Hot yeah. and in a dirty shop. environment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it the 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 power ups and the add ons, like you're saying, um, are 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 really a uh, really what makes it more uh, what the, the as customizable as you want it to be. Um, right. I'm, you know, I've never I until you mentioned that I had I hadn't thought about the pairing of Slack and Zapier. Um, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be looking into that because I I can see where that that might help certainly several uh, yeah. people in my shop. I was using mostly at the time the height of me using Zapier was for social media because I was trying to 
produce a lot of content um, to and have it go out uh, in a in a big way. I was kind of doing a push on Pinterest. And so um, building up my boards on Pinterest and stuff like that and, you know, uh, was kind of like where my focus was at the time. Um, Now, not so much. I got a little crazy. You can go a little crazy with it, too. Right. You know, where you're like, what's on, you know, it, it, it has its moments. But I think simply speaking, a Zapier, a free account on Zapier, you know, I think you get about enough zaps where you could not have to pay for it. It's free. Um, you know, I was just mainly into the email collection and um, so that I could use these emails later on if I wanted to market heavily to, to a certain group of people. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you could do, you can do with Zapier, you can do all kinds of uh, social media, email stuff. I mean, it's just, uh, the sky's the limit. Um so, and it's not that hard because a lot of times people will make a zap and then all you have to do is copy it um, and stuff. So, uh, but it's, it's, you know, it takes a little while to set it up, but on some of them, you know, if you're doing a custom zap, but for the everyday kind of use, you, you could just, um, anyways, yeah, I think this is a good start. I'll show you what I've got so far uh, on my screen and then I'll try to work on it some more. I just pop, popped in a a backdrop on that. Sure. I'm sure Why somebody not? will say, I hate BMW. <laughs> or no, I mean, yeah. BW ramps. <laughs> but I put in, you can change, uh, you you can change the background right here in yeah. use Upsplash or Unsplash or whatever it is. Um, but I think this is a good starting place. And then what we can do is we can share that board uh, cause I made it public. So all the person would have to do is get the link to copy it. And, um, from there, I don't know, where am I? I keep going back to photos for some reason, but anyways, um, I'll, I'll make sure people can, can, um, can find it where it's, I think you go to more and then you can make it a template or copy the board, copy the board, or I can make it a template. I'll do something, but there's the link to the board right there. So we can just share that link and then people can click on it for free and then get started and add in their own cards. Pretty cool. That is cool. So um, here's a message from today's sponsor. Do you know chemical strippers from Banco Sales reduced our prep time by up to 80%? We chose Banco B17 and have been using it now for five years. We were surprised at how effortless it removed finishes from literally anything we put into it. Removal takes minutes, not hours. Several suppliers over the years have told us they have something as good as B17, but don't believe it. There's a reason the name B17 is universally applied for those claiming to have fast strippers. Buy it by name and available only by Benko Sales. B17 is the industry benchmark by which every other stripper is compared. Accept no substitute. Get started today by going to BencoSales.com. B-E-N-C-O Sales.com. Say Roscoat sent you for a free Benko t-shirt. One of the things as we transition out of talking about Trello and, you know, productivity, um, one of the things I want to talk to you today about is, you know, you do all this stuff that Google wants you to do or Instagram, you're posting right. left and right all day long, you know, you get a little over the top with it. And then, you know, there's no other than likes and subscribers subscribes to or followers how do you know you're meeting the benchmarks that these uh like particularly google which is so important to ranking your website and stuff how do you know you're making the mark what is the mark what's the benchmark for so i wanted to bring this up a long time ago on a podcast but i never got around to it and unfortunately this google business um audit is no longer available, which is so sad. Google my business. 
because, well, no, because Vivial, the company that um, was doing this free report. Okay. I mean, they wanted your business, right? But it was just this way, this little kind of hook to get you to do this, but, you know, and of course your, your results would be horrible. And then you'd want to reach out to Vivial and have them help you. And all they do is set up some kind of a, you know, a directory. Uh, it's like the yellow pages. So some kind of directory page for you so that you can, you know, but then they wanted to do all kinds of other things, but so it's I found that this report was more. amazing. Um, and I, so I did this back in September of 2021. Um, and, um, you know, it's going to give me what I came up with or what they came up with how I was doing. Um, of course I make it my business to know what I'm doing, but what I like about this is it's actually, a, it was a tool that you could get back to say, okay, I've made all this effort. How good am I doing? Right. You know, you, right. you need to hear back from Google to say uh, how, you know, am I meeting those benchmarks? Am, do I have enough of what they're wanting in Google from Google to, to get me where I need to go, right. Higher up or more calls, more leads, whatever. Um, but I thought I found what was really cool about this was the industry benchmark was already listed here. And it kind of tells you what you need, like for your description, um, uh, you know, minimum of 125 characters, categories, they want you to have two or three categories, obviously powder coating, sandblasting um, could be rim repair or something like that. Cover photo. I mean, that's some of the basic ones there. They want you to have at least 12 to 17 photos in your in your Google profile. And um, they want you to, it says last photo updated. I had only, I hadn't done anything in about 94 days. Um, and they want you to, they want you to keep you within that range of a hundred days um, of just adding another photo, adding another photo, just to keep it more relevant and stuff. Um, reviews, this was interesting. I think we have 20 or 21 reviews. I don't know how many I have now, but um, I was just shy of the average 20 to 27 reviews. And that's that's pretty high. It's not easy to get really? 20 to 27 reviews. Um, I found that one really, uh, you know, compelling. Um, and then the last, and then also the how the frequency of the review. So I hadn't been pushing reviews for quite some time. And it had been well over 100 days uh, and they want to get it review every 38, 40, 50 days, basically. Um, and stuff. The average rating, I mean, you know, uh, anything above a 4.35 is you're doing pretty good on Google. Any Basically, what I heard about this rating, this five star rating thing is if you're below 4.35, you're not getting ranked at all. They basically yeah. just kill you online. So this is probably the most important um, part of this benchmarking on top of all these other things. Um, and then the response rate, obviously you want to say if you do get a review, good or bad, you you need to respond to every single one. Um you know, either you're saying thank you or sorry, this happened to you. How can we resolve this? Blah, 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 whatever kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, how many times or how often you're responding to those reviews? Are you doing it within the next day or are you, are you doing, you know, what are you doing? Um, and then down here, uh, you know, they want you to post every, I guess they, well, I do to every Every week, I try to make one post. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't clarify really how often, but I was told at some point they want you to post every three or four days. But I don't know. It's it's that's a lot of work. Um, it is a lot of work. I mean, and and on on Facebook or just uh, in general. This is on Google Business. On, uh, your post Google on My Google. Business. Yeah, this is not okay. even social media or nothing. This is not that at all. This is just on Google. So um, I'll tell you that my um, the service that I use to uh, uh, which is Thrive 
to um, yeah, Thrive post, Bot Vivial post to post a, a, a minimum of two times per week on Facebook. Also post that on Google. That's fine. So so I get um, I get uh, updates and um, and. Uh, notifications from Google, uh, my business, you know, saying how many people have viewed it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, uh, it's hard. You don't really get any feedback from necessarily. The only thing you get on feedback is Google will uh, uh, respond to you via email on how many like uh, how many, you know, it's not likes or follows there necessarily. It's just how many views did you get on your photo or on your post? Um, That's pretty much what Google. um, And that's why every, that's why their posts last three or four days um, and stuff. Uh, One of the things, the reason why you only want to post no more than twice a week in Facebook is they actually ding you. You you actually start competing with yourself when, right. <laughs> against yourself when you post more than twice a week in Facebook. Instagram, not so much. Um, you know, obviously they want as much content content there as possible. Um, I'm a little over Facebook at this point, um, personally. Uh, well, and- I think um, from a social media standpoint. It's always good to try and be, um, it's hard to be ahead of the curve, but um, uh, looking at what the trends are and um, Facebook isn't there, right? Or isn't that anymore? No, um, it, it's, it might be for some advertisers, but you know, I mean, obviously you can tell just in, in their you know, the reporting of revenue, how much it's dropped off uh, and stuff. I think, I think in general, everybody's just over it for the moment. I don't know if they'll change that or if they'll have some new fancy tool people will use or people will forget about how bad Facebook is. I don't know. Um, You know, but I think um, one of the hardest things uh, getting over in regards to business listings, um, local business listings and using a listing service is I had a hard time when we moved um, changing all of the addresses. Um, Obviously the first one I changed was Google um, and some, you want to check Facebook of course, and some of the other larger um, Bing and Yahoo, they should all have, you know, uh, current, uh, especially if you move, uh, but you can see some of these other listings. Uh, this is our old address and you can pay to have someone, you know, pay for a service to have someone do that for you. But, you know, I don't know. It depends on where you're getting your leads from. Um, so I do pay for Moz has a local search. I think it's like a hundred bucks a, a year. And I paid them to, you know, but look, they don't even do that good of a job because I still, they're slowly changing these into from the old to the new. So um, they're just doing a handful of them for me. And that slowly happens. It's not easy. So it's hard when you move um, how to uh, keep up with all of that because you have to change your everywhere and it just takes too long. Right. Um, but moving on, um, so I'm going to continue to look for a tool, a free tool that you can do a Google business audit in. I wasn't able to find anything before today, but um, I know there's something out there. We just haven't found it yet. Uh, and you can, uh, it, it, you know, the one thing that I've learned in doing a lot of digital media stuff is what one person, what you'll pay for one person, another person's given it away for free. Oh my God. <laughs> right. So, well, and the, you know, the, the reason for that, and you know, this is a topic that comes up all the time on the, uh, the powder coating forums, um, the <laughs> pages and groups and all that. Um, everyone's, everyone's, uh, uh overhead is different. Right. You know, sim- yeah. Simply put, we all, 
we all pay, you know, roughly the same um, typically for, uh, for, for powders and things like that. Um, um, but the, um, you know, I've got 18 employees. Um, right. You can't be and, doing hundred dollar rim, job, you know, yeah, rim, rim I mean, I, um, I, I just, I just can't, you know, I can't, I can't compete. I, you know, long ago, I just, I, I stopped being able to do things like um, Yeti cups, unless yeah. we're talking about massive one. volume. Right. Um, I just, I can't do one Yeti cup. Um, right. And, uh, but, you know, I took all those jobs. I, you know, I, I, I was there. When you there. started, you mean? Yeah. 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 When I started. Um, yeah, absolutely. I took all those jobs. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people that I did do wheels for, you know, for a hundred dollars because, right. uh, you know, I was joking with someone today, how naively I got, you know, I, 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 I got into this business and I think we covered that, um, in the, in the, yeah, last, in the last one, in right. The last discussion, but, um, you know, it, it's just, There's no way. I, there's no way that any that all of us are ever going to be able to get on this on the same page price wise. Um, I know. I I don't know if it's possible. Hi, this is Ross at Maui Powderworks. I have this problem with my finish. It's peeling and cracking, and there appears to be a white powdery substance underneath. What's happening? Oh yeah, that's a common problem. It's called electrolysis, and in extreme weather and climates, it can ruin the life of your finishes. What we do to fix this is we install a DuraLife fastener. Prevent the early onset of coating failure with our specially designed screw cap that fits any quarter inch hole. Give all your commercial and residential jobs the longest durability against corrosion in harsh environments. Perfect for powder coated, painted or conversion coated finishes. To order your DuraLife sink fasteners today, go to MauiPowderWorks.com, click shop, then click DuraLife. While you're there, check out our other products. Extend the life of your finish. Let DuraLife be your protector. It would Again, be nice to every, have some sort of community. Head. You know what I mean? You know? It does. Consensus? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I get enough feedback from my clients to know, or from new clients to know, if I'm in the wheelhouse, um, mm -hmm. you know, I do um, sometimes get the opportunity to see my, uh, my competitors quotes. Um, and I do secret shop, you know, I do make calls and I do uh, for what good it is and um, just do what I can to try and stay market valued correctly. Relevant. Um, but um, but there's also, you know, we're we're in a transition um, right now as a company to where, like, I think this is my last. This was my last year of patio furniture. Um, <laughs> I'm so I, over. I yeah. And well, I mean, <laughs> I, I say that with a little bit of um, you know sadness because uh, again, and I know we covered this the last time, but if it hadn't been for patio furniture, I'm not sure I would have made it through the pandemic. Um, yeah, that's right. You, know, you did say that. I forgot about that. It's, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we, we are transitioning away and we're, uh, you know, there's another, one of our competitors in the area did this in, uh, in, in November where they actually stopped doing customer work as a whole and went strictly to doing their own, their own stuff, but we're transitioning to just doing commercial. Um, yeah. And letting, letting everyone else have the uh, uh, wheels and stuff like that. And I think that's a good thing in a sense and hear me out on this because, you know, um, it's nice to be able to be flexible enough or have the agility enough to go from a rim to a Yeti mug to a, a, a you know, a huge bunch of a box of you know parts or you know it's great or even like a large industrial job you know where you're doing a gate or a railing it's great to have that flexibility but when you're in a market that is um 
becoming uh, diverse, you know, it's it might be a good thing to kind of, for one, it's an indication that the populace is getting more aware of about powder coatings in general, which means that they're wanting them more for all kinds of things. But when you're in a, maybe in the kind of, uh, you know, area or city that you're in, it's becoming so popular and so big, it may be kind of getting ready to split into what you were just describing, where you're just giving the rim guys all their stuff. And then, you know, say this one guy wants to do uh, patio furniture, but, and that's all he does. Uh, you know, for us here in Maui, um, it's kind of, it was kind of already like that. We, uh, um, we had a powder coater that's been in business for years before we even started. And, and that's all he did was the furniture because we have so many hotels here. And so when he does something, it's like, uh -huh. it, it's miles and miles of lanai furniture, patio furniture, whatever. And um, I, we didn't really we would take it if it came our way when we first started, but now we just push it all to him. Whereas he was back, th back in the day when we first started, he was pushing all the custom work, all the motorcycle stuff, sure. all the detail stuff he didn't have time for. Cause he's just using a box feed and he's got three colors to choose from and that's it. He doesn't want to have to go and buy a bunch of candy that, you know, somebody may or may not show up for. Right. So, um, you know, it, for us, it kind of, it kind of just coordinated that way so easily. It didn't, you know, it wasn't like we set out to do it one way or the other, but um, it's been kind of, you know, it just happened that way naturally. I think your industry and your city in your, is just getting so diverse that it might be splitting and you might be, that's why you're, you know, you should be going for more commercial jobs, you know, and then somebody will start up and do the Yeti mug thing. And they'll do that for five or 10 years till they're like sick and tired of it. And then they're going to, you know, but by then, maybe you'll be so much further ahead of them, you know? Well, you know, what, another thing that I've noticed in this area um, is that the we're, 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 we're shrinking as, as, as a, as far as the number of shops that we've got. Um, um, it's going to get tough, I think, for a lot of us that aren't it, big enough. It's, um, and, and we've, we've, We've bought the assets of of, of two, um, you right. know that that closed, and um, you know it's just, you know the, the the guys that are that are that are hanging on, the guys that are 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 making it right now are the larger ones, and what is happening now for all of us for the the mid size and then the you know the the really large. And companies is all of our uh, turnaround times have have now gone yeah to where you know we're having to tell customers it's going to be four to five weeks five to six weeks you know stuff like that and what i'm getting from the customers is well that's what i'm hearing everywhere and yeah you know so um you know the you know the diversity of of, of companies and stuff is great and, you know, we do have, there's, I still know who I can, you know, if a customer comes in with patio furniture, I know I can send them to chair care or whatever, but right. yeah, um, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, but we're, 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 it's been a long time coming for us to get into this transition period. Um, you know, I feel like we've earned it. It's going to, it's going to be a little messy because um, and, and I'm going to grandfather certain customers who right. um, have been loyal to us over the years, who we've done a lot of, uh, um, you know, specific types of jobs for wheels and whatnot. Um, they'll make they'll make the cut. But new customers and that type of thing, we're going to have to uh, we're going to tell no. And for so long, I, I those two those that two letter word, I haven't really been able to say. I know it's hard to do. I, I don't like saying that word either, even though Ross says it all the time, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, he's saying no, no, no. And I'm saying, yes, yes. Somehow in the middle, we find a, a fine, you know, we find a way, but, um, 
you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think we're going into a, a transition. I'm not, I don't necessarily want to talk about like economics or, you know, sure. recession or any of that because it's too unknown at this point, you know, um, seems like, although it has dipped down a manufacturing is still doing okay. It kind of took a little bit of a hiccup uh, during that whole um, Fed thing, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, it's not really anything that we can control directly. It's just all, all right. these other people in Washington. So, um, but, you know, I, I'd say I'd like to table that to see what ends up happening in the next six months uh, is in terms of the economy. We might be having something you know, that we might need to talk about sooner than later, you know, but um, I, I do see some kind of hap something happening in the future. I do feel that um, where maybe the small guys might get bigger or the big guys might be getting bigger, you know, uh, you know, there's something that's going to happen a break or I don't know if it's not less of breaking, but just changing. I do feel sure. that. Um, where it'll go, it'll just depend on how people are managing their shops, I guess, and their co their connections um, and stuff. So, um, okay, well, let's. I want to talk about one other subject. Um, we'll continue to look for a free tool. Um, you might want to check with Thrive because Thrive is the company that bought. Vivial. I went over to their website. I didn't see anything, but if you have a Thrive uh, um, contact or lead, ask them about that Vivial Google My Business Audit is the tool that they use. And I'm sure they have it. They just uh, might be using it internally. Who knows? Um, but moving on, I want to go over to... Uh, Moz for a second. There's two tools. They're free. We're talking all about free stuff today. So let's uh, kind of get back to that. And um, I'm going to share my screen. And we'll just kind of go down this journey. And this is just a sort of a, a, a little uh, overview of a couple of free tools that I use regularly to kind of check in where I'm at, uh, what the world thinks of Maui Powder Works, okay? And um, this one here is called Moz. And up here in the top is a, uh, in the top menu section is called free SEO tools. And you just wanna click on that. It'll take you to this page. I think, well, will it take me to that page? Oh, it'll take you to Link Explorer. So that's the, so you click on that and then you go to Link Explorer. Um, and then that, that'll be this page here. So it'll ask you actually before that, it'll ask you to put your, uh, it, you know, search, you know, you so you put your domain, you don't need to put HTTPS or www or whatever. Uh, but you put that and you click analyze and it'll bring you to this page. Now, what does all this stuff mean? Um, it's just an overview of how well you're doing. Um, domain authority is just what you look like on the outside um, and how they rank you. Um, most don't have this high of authority. I, I pretty much have a pretty high authority. Domain authority would be like Facebook, YouTube would be like at 100% or 98 right. or something because the, people go to them as looking for them as an authority. Pinterest is on one of the top. So it's from zero to a hundred. And so when you're a small business and you have a 16 domain authority, that's just amazing. Very rarely do you get that high. Um, I'm going to show you your domain authority here in a second. Oh boy. Um, no, no, it's not that bad. It's actually pretty good. Um, so we're going to kind of purview that. But um, th there's some new tools to Moz that I've been kind of discovering. They're always, you know, between Moz and this other company I'm about to show you, they, you know, they're competitors uh, online. So they're competing for your business and they're constantly releasing new free tools uh, because they want to one up the other guy, right? Um, uh, but some of these uh, keywords or ranking keywords is one that you want to pay attention to. How many do you have? How many can you get some more? And those are just the words that are embedded in your website that you're using um, 
words like powder coating or right. s- sub uh, sandblasting or you know uh you know powder coating near me or you know stuff like that right those are keywords that you use in your um in your website that they're pulling uh, that rank for your type of business right. um Linking domains, I'm going to just pass on that, but basically it's just uh, how discoverable are you by being linked to other websites uh, and stuff. So I don't want to go too deep with that one, but um, I think you can scroll down uh, to the bottom of this page here. And this, if it gives you, just gives you more information about your website, what your top pages are on your site. And where I'm going with this is, you want to know, do you, you know, if you're in a situation, if we are in a situation in the future, maybe you want to spend more t- money advertising if things slow down. Um, uh, maybe you want to allocate a certain amount of, uh, you know, Google ads on, you know, your services or whatever. Uh, I'm going to get you there here in a second. So I'm kind of just primering you up to know what your top pages are on your site because if you're if you're ranking high in keywords um, and knowing what your competition is, um, these sites use different algorithms, right? They're com- they're competitors themselves, right. Moz and this other company. So they're they've got algorithms out there that you know will help you. But you, it's good to go to more than one because each one's going to give you a slightly different view or a facet. Um, and that's where you'll see here in a minute what we're gonna, what I'm gonna show you. So, Moz has um, on this again. It's free. It's a new tool called Competitive Research. Okay, so you click on this, and when you do, uh, it's uh, you know, assuming that you've already gone through this first step where you've got an overview, it's gonna. You're now um, you being able to continue to use these tools under your domain. Um, right. You click on that and it takes you to this page here. And when you scroll down, and that's when I said, here's my, this is according to Moz, this is my top 25 competitors. Right. Okay. Now, some of these are, you know, PF online, that's product finishing online, that they're, they're a, a news site. Uh, they're going to have a higher domain authority than me because they do news all day long about painting and coatings. Um. Pittsburgh Sprank Equipment, you know them. They sell, uh, you know, uh, equipment in the powder coating industry or spray guns, um, right. powder coating guns, um, prismatic powered powders. Yes. I, you know, you'd want definitely want an account with them because they give you domain authority through their authority. So if you have a lower ranked website, which we all do, um, they're it's good to have an account with them, especially their public account where that you can upload photos of jobs that you've done through them because you can get a lot of backlinking and that right. adds credibility to your website. And that's what a lot of people kind of forget. And I, before I do that, um, before I finish with that thought, I want to remind everybody to go over to <laughs> powdercoatingnearme.com and get yourself a coder page on this directory site, which we run um, because it is giving everybody domain authority. Now we're not as gonna, we're not as high right now as prismatic powders, but it is a directory that is growing. Um, and I'm very proud. It's 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 actually growing very organically. And people are uh emailing us and asking for quotes now. That that I never thought when I I really just built the directory for SEO uh, to help coders get SEO on their websites, especially ones that struggle in competitive areas. Right. Um, it's a free, it will always be free listing. I'm not ever going to charge for that. Um, so it's kind of where cus- customers meet coders. Uh, that was the whole, uh, I guess, inspiration for this website. Um, and I'm very, very happy because a lot of it is just happening organically and naturally people are finding this website and using it. Sidebar there for a second. Sorry, guys, but just go over here and add your coding shop. You'll need your logo and at least three photos and I will approve your listing right away. 
Uh, generally, I you know, it's not that we don't want any garage coders out there. If you're a legit garage coder, certainly submit it and stuff, but I prefer you to have a commercial site or a commercial location if you're going to add, but we'll take it as it comes, right? Hey guys, you know, we never thought the Powder Coder podcast would take off as well as it has. The level of engagement and bringing custom coders together has been wonderful and worth every late night edit and weekend recording. Whether it's product features, smart business strategies, or custom coder interviews, we are encouraged to continue to bring great content. That's why we're going to show you how you can help us just a little bit more by sponsoring the show for as little as a dollar, five, or ten dollars per month. Just go to Roscoe.com page and look for the Become a Patreon button in the upper right hand corner of the page. Once you're there, you can scroll to learn more about our goals and mission, grow our community by bringing you new episodes and news each week. With every sponsor level, you get something for yourself too to guarantee your success as a powder coat. We are so thankful for you and enjoying the content we bring you each week and hope you show your support by becoming a sponsor. And level Level up your powder powder coater game. game. Um, I also want to do some uh, job postings here too, because I think there's a definite need for, uh, you know, you help needing extra SEO when you're trying to find, uh, you know, job people for new jobs in your business as well. So we're still working on that. And um, I've got a couple of them up here uh, that have been posted, but anyways, um, moving on, I just wanted to kind of show that to you, but getting back to this, um, competitive research, uh, tool, which is free. Um, it just starts listing all these and that's where I found lo and behold, I found you. Now you have a domain authority of nine and that is no, no, that's actually really good for a company website that's not bad at all because remember these people are most of these people here are authority websites like news and and stuff like that i haven't checked them all out um this is powder coat art i don't even know what that is would have to click over there um and this just tells you how the overlap is happening with keywords right this is keyword overlap and then rivalry Um, I don't really pay too much. I don't know what the score necessarily means, but it's actually great to know where you are. Um, and, and here's Powderworks Inc too. They're also doing quite well. They do a lot. So that's the one in North Carolina. Mm Mm-hmm. No, no. I'll show you that one in a second. These guys are in, um, Canada. Oh, okay. I think, yeah, I think they're in Canada. Um, So anyways, I thought that was really cool uh, just to kind of see, oh, you're up there too, right? And um, and stuff like that. So, okay, so the next tool, this is where I'm going to show you why you want to use more than one tool if you really want to get a full understanding of where you are in the marketplace. Well, Um, and and if I could touch real quick on on how important this is, what this um, equates to real real world is um, I've I've. I've done this. You can be pretty much anywhere in the Dallas Fort Worth area and Google powder coating. And I come up at least typically in the top three or four, um, right. if not, and if not number one. Yes. And you know what? We can do that too. I mean, I we'll do it in SEMrush and see what it says. This is the next one called SEMrush. I've put Maui powder works in here, but when we're, when I'm done explaining all this, I think we'll go back and do you and see what happens um, and stuff. But that's good that you know that because you need to know where your standing is in the marketplace in order, especially when you're thinking about doing advertising. Um, And I don't know, we don't do too much advertising here at Maui Powderworks just because our market is so small and it's, it's very word of mouth anyways. But um, I've, I hate paying for ads unless I absolutely have to. 
And so what I've done is just worked on the organic reach to where now we're so unreachable um, competitive wise, uh, com- you know, compared to our competition, there's no way they'll catch us. There, there's just no, I, you know, they'll, it, unless I'd have to just go on vacation to Dallas, Fort Worth for like a year and a half and I just ignore it, you know, right. You but uh, Fall off the face of the earth, whatever. But, uh, you know, I, that's my, that was just my strategy from the get go because I wanted to learn more about digital marketing, but, um, but this is the same, this company here is very much the same as Moz. Um, so you can use one or the other, but I like using both because I like to see more than one view. Um, and their algorithms are slightly different. Now they're all pulling data from Google and all these other places, but um, the way they present the data is different, right? So um, now here is what I wanna show you. I'm just in organic research, which is similar to the comparative analysis research on Moz. Um, And this just kind of gives you an overall view of how many keywords, if I'm trending up in keywords or down in keywords or whatever. Um, This tells you the top organic keywords. And what I like about this is if I'm thinking about advertising, I want to know how many people are clicking or searching for powder coating Hawaii. Um, That's a pretty high percentage of traffic. But because I'm number one in the position of it, do I really need to advertise? I'd almost be like, you know, when you see an ad on top of the organic search, it, right. it, you know, you're competing with yourself at that point. So do you really need to spend dollars there, right? Under that keyword, powder coating Hawaii. To me, I've reached the summit of where I've been trying to get all along. Now, my area is a little different because we have eight islands and each island is different, right? And so you have to understand for me, topography is a problem. I want to be ranked where the guys on Oahu are ranked and I want to be better than them um, because Google looks at Oahu as the main island. You know what I mean? But it's not the main island for powder coating. This is the main island for powder coatings. But so I've had my own problems. And that's why I pay for a local search on Moz. I think it's a hundred bucks a year. And they do, they, it just helps improve my ranking there. But now that I'm number one, I'm not sure I really want to do too much. I may not continue with Moz local. Uh, I may not need to because I've already reached the position that I want to be in, which is number one under powder coating Hawaii. Some of these other ones are just related to um, my uh, to my blog posts, but this is the main one for me uh, because this is the number one search in Hawaii. I think there's, you know, you can see the search volume um, and I think it tells you for whatever it is for the week. Um, I think it, there's some kind of a, yeah, it's for this date <clears throat> and stuff. Uh, it also tells you when you're going up to, you know, if you're ranking higher and it, look at powder coating near me. So I've got a listing on there and look how high I've gone from eight position 18 to position 15. Uh, and look at the search volume for this. It's huge. So this kind of proves two things. Number one, I'm already ranked for powder coating Hawaii in keyword search. So I don't really need to advertise because I'm number one already. Um, and that's the keyword I want to rank for. So you have to know what keyword you want to rank for in the first place. The second part is powder coating near me is a popular search. And I think based on this, I think my listing on the powder coating near me directory is helping me rank. Ah. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. And all these other searches are just blog posts that I rank for in the first place um, and stuff. So now where did I want to? Okay. So now I want to go to this main organic competitors, which is very similar to what we just did in the competitive research on Moz. Now you'll see here, um, let me just, you can see here that they're actually saying powder coating MA, which I think is 
Massachusetts or Maine, they do a lot of advert. I know they do a lot of ads and they do tend to rank higher stuff. I don't know where that gets them. Um, I don't really, but the fact that I getting a lot of organic reach and they're paying for ads to get ranked is tells you a lot about my site versus theirs. Here's DJ powder coating, North Carolina. Hello, Denny. Um, uh -huh. Now the reason why DJ powder coating is now my competitor is because there are our applicator of patinas in North Carolina. And because patina powder coating is ranked or listed as a keyword um, on Maui Powder Works site and now on Denny's website, we're now becoming competitors. So when you type in powdercoatingnearme.com, you'll see um, that we're both on the same page, which is the first page. And let's face it, if you're not on the first page in Google, you're not going to, nobody searches past the second. Right, nobody, the nobody second. does. I'm sorry. So you've got to rank for something. Hopefully it's something local. It's something um, area wise. So knowing what people are searching in your area is the, the most important key, key, key uh, point I want to make here. But knowing who your competition in is as well is also important but i it, i surprised me because you're my competitor on moz dj isn't but in the, this is the difference between their two algorithms so somewhere in between you're going to see and that's why you want to use both sites to your advantage because it's they're both free tools um and stuff so that yeah that's kind of what i wanted to show you there um let's see what else here's more keyword um and what you'll see actual keyword variations. And I'm, you know, people are searching powder coating near me 50,000 times a month. That's yeah. pretty, that's a, that's a pretty good. I mean, it's not a million like Kim Kardashian probably has a million searches under Kim Kardashian, but for our industry, that's really good. And powder coating is even less. It's uh 27,000. Um, these these areas here tell you how much keywords are going to cost you when you do go to advertise, right? This is the, this is a ranking for how much things cost. The difficulty, the higher the ranking, the more difficult it is to, you'll be paying more basically. Um, that's another thing you need to know about advertising and stuff. So uh, let's see what else, but anyways, look at all these free tools you get with SEMrush, you can even get like, uh, um, uh, they have, they have local SEO too. So you can, uh, do that as well, but they have social media. If you want to track your social media, um, you can see, uh, how well you're doing, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I mean, that you can connect all of these. Right. Uh, and manage your profiles. Where SEMrush comes from is is through um, social media. It started as a social media tracker because getting stats on social media from Facebook and Instagram was impossible. So they started to develop their own analytics report. And it, now it's just branched into all kinds of things um, to help people all for free. So it's pretty cool. I don't pay for SEMrush. Um, I, uh, I, um, I, I, this is a free account. So it's a lot of tools you can work through, not get too bundled up in. Um, and I think you can even do, I don't know if you have to pay for a site audit. Um, no, but I, I think this one's free too. Um, so this tells you how well your site's working. If you have a WordPress, uh, just some other general stuff, you know, so let's, uh, I don't know if you feel like you want to do this, but we could do, uh, always happy to check out, you know, yeah. Okay. So let's, my, uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm logging in to, uh, to my thrive right now, just to, how much um, do you pay for thrive? So I've got a, I do a lot with thrive. 
you know, obviously they handle, you know, they handle my website. They, you know, they've cr created my website. They, oh, they okay. do m multiple, uh, multiple postings on Facebook, on social media per week. Um, do, uh, videos on a, on a routine basis and, um, just several other things. And I'm at uh, 500 a month. That's really good. So that's really good. Been with them for, <laughs> Uh, going on, I guess, four and a half years now. And, um, but what are you, so, so that, so then if you're paying $500 a month for a lot of stuff, it seems like a lot of stuff And that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's it. Let's we'll see what your 500 is getting you. Right. <laughs> yeah, please. So, uh, remember on Moz, your authority score was nine and this one says seven. So there's it. Don't get worried about that. It's no, still sure. really good. Um, it's just that the way they review things or take in that data from Google and all other places just gives, it just ranks differently. That's all. But it's still really good. This page I love, this is called positions. Um, so for you, this, all these little symbols mean what you're ranking. It's called a local pack. That's a Google term for serpent as uh, search engine results. And these little symbols tell you that you're you're getting ranked for a photo, you're getting ranked for your link, and you're getting ranked for your local pack, which is your location um, in, in your Google business page. And so when your Google business page is on one page, you know, on one half of the page, and then you see all the links, they want to know how many of those links that's on your, you know, that's next to your Google listing, how many of those links are related to your Google listing? And that's good. Um, this is really good to be in. You're number one. And you've gone up in Powderworks in a different way of spelling it. I always like this, especially when you're a when you're doing blog and blogging and stuff, it, it, it's nice to, uh, you know, it means you're part of a snippet or a top of the page ranking. Um, right. and stuff. So that's always, you always want to make Google happy. I'm sorry, but that's the, the world we live in. Um, so I hope that's helped you. Um, it really you know. has. It's, I mean, it, there's, there's just so much, so many metrics out there that, uh, um, that give you different snapshots of, of, you know, what, how your business is performing or not performing or, um, yeah. where you can grow and, um, and, and I think that's keep the, tabs on the people you're paying. You know, whether it's Thrive or you're paying a web developer or, you know, you gotta, you've got to have your way of figuring out how well you're doing, you know, where your dollars are going. And depending on how you're motivated, um, you know, push you to do more, push you to do better. Especially with the competitive analysis, um, you know, that's where it's what's not, what your competitor's not doing is where you have the in on pretty much anything, right? Whether it's a service or a keyword ranking or, or something like that, you know, a backlink. Those are all the different ways that you can compete both on screen and off screen. And are you on, are you on the powder coating near me directory? Did we get you? Okay, good. I've been on there for over a year now. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's, I can't believe how much it's grown. I really want to do more with it. I just, you know, have a million other websites to monitor too, but every month I get a report from Google and it just, I'm not even advertising. I advertised, I advertised on Pinterest um, for like, and Facebook at the very beginning, but I haven't done anything since. And um, it just keeps growing uh, every, every month. Um, so people are liking it and they're finding us and then they're emailing us going, can you help me find a powder coater? So now I need to get more powder coaters on there. That's, that's the challenge. I know. So, um, anyways, well, thanks for being my guinea pig today with your website. <laughs> Always. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always such, such a such a blast and i love the conversation it's uh uh it's great talking to like-minded people it is and i like that that you are motivated to grow in so many different ways you know and just rap about the everyday stuff is fun too but just to 
to always kind of keep pushing the dial and pushing the envelope on what you can achieve with your website and, and, um, you know, and it, it's hard. You put all this stuff out there. You want to know your efforts are paying off, right? Whether it's money, um, ads, or organic um, content that people can find and discover you on, you know, because it's a lot of work to do this. So you got to know how well you're doing it, right? And I'll keep, uh, I'll, I'll wait to hear from it, from you if you email Thrive or your guys and see if they can find that original. I'll send you the link. Um, or the PDF, and then they'll look at the report and say, oh yeah, we have this tool, but you got to pay for it. Maybe they'll say we got to pay for it now. But I think that was the best thing about Vivial um, was this free tool. And I'm kind of bummed it's not there anymore. Right. All right. Well, I hope it's sunny skies again. It is and not terribly hot. So. Oh, that's we'll, good. Uh, Hopefully the summer is over. Me, you know, meteorological summer is 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 ending in just a couple of days, and maybe uh, maybe we can get a little bit of fall weather coming up pretty soon. Yeah, that's I mean, when production it, goes up. It should be when you start to see like people posting pumpkin spice videos or something like that. It should be <laughs> in <Yeah>. August. <laughs> it's like I the weather should be cold one, already. One of these days, I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, package a pumpkin spice powder, um, you know. And <laughs> I'm surprised Prismatic has done that yet. <laughs> I need to do that, do that every it's year, do a, a seasonal blend, you know, of <laughs> pumpkin spice powder. But uh, Yeah, get it yeah. high demand in the fall and then drop it. Nobody wants pumpkin spice after, you know, December 1st. Just, um, just turn the, turn the, the illusion root beer into um, you know, illusion pumpkin spice for the, for the, for the season. <laughs> that's a good one. That's, you know, so, that's actually a good choice there. I think Columbia, uh, pow uh, Columbia powders did one where they had a name, a new chameleon color and, uh, Ashton Palmer got to name it. He picked a pretty good, I could see why he won that challenge. Um, it's yeah. dragon skin or something like that. It's, uh, it was actually a pretty good descriptive, uh, uh, word for it for what the color was and uh just give well, it a it, shout oh go ahead go ahead well i'm I just gonna say i mean we're just we're, i'm just really looking forward to to fall so we can talk about fall all day long um, <laughs> especially after the thousand year flood <laughs> thousand year flood and the, you know the, the the longest seemingly the longest um 100 degree heat streak in in texas history i just you know i'm just done with it yeah ready to ready to get out of the ark and um populate the world with powder coating <laughs> there you go there you go uh, um give a shout out to my husband who's in the background there sweating his ass off and stripping a gate <laughs> keep at it ross <laughs> one of the one of the days he dreads the most stripping the uh by hand you know instead of putting it in a vat so but i hope i hope we have all of our equipment upgrades done in the next few weeks i've just been throwing that whip at him and saying you got to do this you got to do this so we're well and it sounds like not only committed. do you need not only do you uh the equipment upgrades themselves but you need to um you were saying online that you have a lot of equipment that you've never installed yeah Oh yeah. Oh he bought, he bought a, a compressor, uh, back when we were in Lahaina in 2018 <laughs> that we paid monthly on, you know, rent, it was leased to own or whatever that thing was. I'll tell you, do not, whatever you do, I'm sorry. I'm just going to put this out there. Do not go with any kind of loan from, uh, Oh, what's the name of that? I'm trying to block it out of my mind. Main Street Financial. Oh, God, oh, they're horrible. Yeah, the, they're horrible. The, now that we've had the upgrades here, where we went from, we thought we were had it had a 200 amp service um, from the very beginning. Turns out we didn't. So we ended up having to get a permit to upgrade to 200 amp service, which was crazy. I don't even know how we, how we even overlooked that when we moved here. But now we've got the 200 amp service 
all set up. So now we've got the buck boost. We can finally plug in the new com compressor that's been sitting on the floor for four years, five years. <laughs> and then we just got the Benko uh, E-strip tank, you know. Um, so, you know, we still have to figure that one out when we get to that too. But yeah, we're going up. So what we've decided to do is because we can't go next door to either of these places because they're occupied right now until they're unoccupied and we can move into them. We're just going to have to go up. So we're going to have to store our powders upstairs. We're going to have to store extra equipment that we don't use on a daily basis upstairs. And that's what we're kind of working on right now. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of little projects that need to just happen or we can't, we can't continue to move productively and that's the problem is too cramped of a space but it's just you know we all we all experience it trust me yeah so so um but we'll get there and we'll keep everybody posted along the way so thanks for coming on today it took us a couple of days to accomplish it but <laughs> thanks for having me we'll make it look all pretty on the end um part so i hope i hope you learned some new stuff today um with some free apps that we had and we'll work, continue to work on that template together. Uh, I'll try to put it together and, and uh, see how it works for us. We'll try to start implementing it and maybe we can share it with everybody. Absolutely. All right. Take care. See you later, Matthew. Bye, Kimberly. Bye.